the invasion will ramp up and we will be silenced. You will be silenced. I will be silenced. How? Through lawfare, lawcraft, and intimidation tactics. And I'll, we have to start there because that's what's happening. Arrested for posts on Facebook in the UK. Same is happening in Canada. So there's lots to get to. Let's get to it. First, we have to stop. start at Tom Mazzaro. And he's highlighting this arrest that happened in the United Kingdom. Wiretap Media has cut it together with the Canadian Minister of uh, the, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Justice Minister Verini. And Verini is talking about how England's got this right, and we need to we need to get this right in Canada. Amongst cut amongst the arrest of somebody for posting something on Facebook, and they wouldn't even tell him what he posted. Never mind, tell him who made the complaint. Someone made a complaint, and we're worried about you, and you're coming down to the police station with us. Meanwhile, there are mobs of angry Muslims going around targeting white British people and pulling them out of cars and attacking them. So crazy town. Tom Mazzaro says, okay, liberals, I'll be your test case. I do hate everything your government has done to Canada and I hate everything you stand for. I think your party are criminals, traitors, and hypocrites who should all be charged with treason. Is that enough hatred for you? Should I expect a knock on my door from the Gestapo? And Wiretap Media is showing this arrest from yesterday in the United Kingdom of a gentleman who posted something on social media. One of the things that really, really bothers me is how unprofessional this officer is, but all of the police officers in the UK are. Now, I've worked in closed custody. I've worked in children's mental health. Children's mental health was, and, and in closed custody as well, you get trained on how to re, how to be in a situation where somebody may attack you, how to, how to hold your body, how to be ready for something like that and not look ready for something like that because you don't want to set somebody off by being ready for something like that. Like you don't get your, get your fists up, right? And you're not like, all right, I'm going to keep my hands up to make sure my face is protected like boxing. That's not exactly how you do it. But you certainly don't put your hands in your pockets. And I've seen police officers in the UK standing in front of a mob of men who were telling, foreign men, who were telling the police officers, oi, we don't need you. We've got ourselves to police us. Like you, you get on now and, and we're done. We're done with you and pretending, get out of here. And he's standing there with his fingers in his, his fingers, his hands in his pockets. And this officer says, right, I'm going to arrest you. And she puts her, her hands in her pockets. I'm like, rule one, like you're, you should have your arms free and ready to respond. Maybe not up at, at your face, but certainly ready to like, you know, deflect a blow or something to that effect. Anyway, she is putting herself in danger due to not following basic common sense. <laughs> Holy cow. Here's some of this. The time's uh, 20 to 3, 1440, arresting you on suspicion of improper use of the electronic uh, communications network. I'm just what? One but I want to be crystal clear about what the Online Harms Act does not do. It does not undermine freedom of speech. It enhances free expression. So I'm actually being arrested. You're going to be arrested, okay? Right. Take that to the police station. Right. You, okay. This is in relation to some comments that you've made on a Facebook page. We join allies like the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Australia, who have also legislated in this area. We have learned from their experiences. We cannot tolerate anarchy on the internet. The cost is too great. I mean, you, you said I was going to be arrested under some war information. But I'm going to be arrested for posting on Facebook. Some comments that are offensive, obscene, and people have made a complaint about that, and it's. And can you can you tell me what this comment was? We'll okay, that. well we'll do that when we interview. All right. And okay. so, what am I going to be locked up for the night, or? Hopefully well, not. Hopefully. What we are doing is creating a freestanding hate crimes offence, which touches any p possible delict or crime under the Criminal Code of Canada. And I think what is important about it is that it gives. Uh, the police and it gives prosecutors more flexibility in terms of contemplating this aspect on the front end of their deliberative exercise, on the front end of how they will conduct their prosecutions. Very importantly, this does not require AG consent. So he's taking himself out of the loop. Previously, if he wanted hate speech prosecuted, it had to have a, it had to have the AG involved, and now they're they're making it. Well, you know, and everything is hate speech. All the crimes in the book could be also hate crimes. All of them, every single one. Right? You look at somebody jaywalking. Jaywalking is a hate crime, buddy. I'm sorry, you jaywalked hatefully, and I mean that's a 15 year sentence. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, William Macus. So, do you think that the police will show up at your door? Honestly, genuinely, I have I have video footage of the police showing up at my door. I'm, I'm, I wish I were kidding, um, but do you think the police will show up? And this was in 2021. I was not threatening anybody. They were just coming because people who 
are supposed to work for us, the Wellington Dufferin Guelph Health Unit didn't like some of the posts that I put on in response to their Facebook or their uh, Twitter posts that were calling for more um, vaccinations of people, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact that it's leading to conflict is not a threat. That's just a fact. And it's a fact that their policies, what they're pushing is leading to that conflict. And that's bad. So the police are misunderstanding, misinterpreting, and then acting on, or the the people who are posting this nonsense are claiming victimhood and then trying to silence people. It is already happening. I have anecdotal evidence of my own, but here's William Mackis. He puts up what happened to him yesterday. College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta just sent two Edmonton police officers to my house at 2.15 p.m. On a, on a Sunday, he says, um, or today, yesterday. Apparently in retaliation, but yesterday was Monday. Apparently in retaliation for my June 17th, 2024 injection of truth speech sponsored by the Alberta UCP and Aaron Bouchard, the college filed a police report claiming that someone left them a threatening phone call about pedophile doctors that I referenced in my June 17th speech, and they directed Edmonton police to my house on a Sunday afternoon. Weird. So this guy gives William Mackis, who's a physician, gives a speech talking about doctors who are pedophiles. And then somebody unrelated to him who heard his speech called the called the College of Physicians and Surgeons to complain about these pedophile doctors. And the College of Physicians and Surgeons blamed Dr. Mackis and sent police after him. That's strange, right? The Edmonton police officers were very polite and entirely professional. I gave my statement and they left. The meeting was very brief. I don't think I'd be talking to them. I think I'd be saying, I don't talk to police. This is ridiculous. You can contact my lawyer and maybe I'll give a statement through them. Bye. We're not having this. We're not We're not doing this. Bye. Uh, so this is where we're at in Alberta, they say. On June 17th, I told millions of Albertans that the CPSA gave medical licenses back to at least two Alberta doctors who were arrested for child sex abuse, child pornography, and child sex trafficking. And he names them. These cases were covered by mainstream media. At the same time, the college persecuted and destroyed the medical licenses of good doctors like Dr. Daniel Negasi, Dr. Roger Hodgkinson, Dr. Gary Davidson, Dr. Eric Payne, Dr. Gregory Chan, Dr. Dennis Modry, Dr. Daniel Bratha, Dr. Michael Prince, and more. Apparently, some of the UCP didn't like that, including several senior advisors to Alberta, Alberta's Premier Danielle Smith, who knew protecting children is controversial for some senior UCP leaders. Alberta Minister of Health, Andrea Lagrange has, or Lagrange has a spokesperson come out in, in defense of the child sex abusers and child pornographers who are arrested by the RCMP in a shocking public statement in unison with NDP and Rachel Notley, who also defended the pedophiles that were hired under Notley's term. And that should come as no surprise to anyone. Adriana still hasn't fired her Ministry of Health staff, some of whom are actively leaking confidential government emails to AHS lawyers who then use them to commit fraud in court and try to keep AHS in power while undermining Premier Smith at the same time. I have extensive evidence of this. It appears that in retaliation for me calling out the college for protecting certain child sex abusers who are arrested by the RCMP while sabotaging my medical license while sabotaging medical licenses of good doctors, the college is now trying to intimidate my family by sending police to my home. Again, Edmonton police were as polite and professional as possible. Can anyone help me arrange an urgent meeting with the Minister of Health to discuss this latest attack on my family? This is not the first time college officials have either intimidated or threatened my family, including at our home. So lawcraft, lawfare, the ability to send police on a bullshit trumped up charge to intimidate people to shut up, that's what's happening. That's what's happening in Canada. Do you like it? Is that is that where you want to live? Because that's where we live. Dr. David Wood is highlighting this. This is in the UK, and we're going to be talking about the UK imminently. But they're blaming Tommy Robinson for the far right hate. And it's not far right. And it's the hate is coming from the roving gang of Muslims, armed Muslims with swords and machetes and things like that. Dr. Wood says, strange how these journalists are never concerned about the online output of the drogan, drogandist. Dawagandists, um, the propagandists, promoting child marriage, the public execution of apostates, and the violent subjugation of the world. Instead, they're concerned about the online output of people who object. So are the authorities powerless to stop Tommy Robinson's online output? New laws may make it easier to pursue far-right activists over alleged role in spreading disinformation. People are being targeted. They're going to take out people like Tommy Robinson and anybody who's like him. And he's a big fish, and they're going to try and take him out first. And one of the other things that is free speech, but not 
exactly the same as the free speech stuff. This is an Elon Musk, you know, what's your game, Elon Musk? Because I feel like there's a game and we're not privy to the details of the game that Elon is playing. Tracy Wilson says, what's up with this, Elon Musk? Powerful people getting tired of being ratioed. Did they ask for this? Because nobody else did. Raw News Alert says, X previously known as Twitter will soon remove the visible counts of likes, comments, reposts, and other interactions from replies to posts. So you can't tell if somebody's being ratioed. Right. So the government says it's the far right. And if everybody says no and gives them a huge ratio and they have a, you know, a million views and no likes, then nobody will be able to call them out on that, on the obvious feedback that represents. And that's probably by design. Right. Here's a news article from, what is it? Wake Up Britain. I don't know. Uh, Good Morning Britain. It says, violent scenes continued yesterday evening with police coming under attack from rioters in Plymouth and Belfast as families from communities that have been targeted by the far right say they're scared to leave their homes. The far right. The far right. Andy No highlights what's going on by ignoring the armed Muslim patrol violence in Birmingham, where even your colleagues at Sky News were victimized. You're engaging in two-tiered reporting. So they won't report about Muslims, roving gangs of armed Muslims who are intimidating even their reporters, but they will report on fictional far-right people terrorizing families. Weird. Oh, God. So that's a that's a reporter, I believe, saying, no, I'm not going, I'm not going near that. And Concerned Citizen says, does this distressed, confused, scared, elderly Englishman deserve this, in, deserve this in Plymouth? Do you recognize this from when Canada went authoritarian? Oh, 10 seconds ago, right? Like th- the police were behaving in this similar way to citizens who couldn't believe it, who couldn't believe it to the point of walking up to riot police who have full riot gear and shields and asking them, hey, like, are you are you going to treat me in a humane way? To which their response is to hit the person with the shield. So the police can punch you in the head. But if you do that, it's time for jail, right? That's far right violence, right? Police in Plymouth, UK came around from behind their barrier while an elderly gentleman was assaulted by an officer and hit hit the ground hard. The police then advanced at the crowd of patriots. Unprovoked injuries were sustained by protesters who were attacked seemingly at random. Here's just some of this. Sorry, the volume is a little loud. Seems like lines being drawn. Nobody, I, I didn't see anybody attacked in that in that footage. Here's uh, Ian Miles Chong. He says migrant gangs are reportedly entering pubs and cafes to attack British people. Here is pe- here are people entering the cafes. Deport, deport. Like honestly, if you're standing, if you're sitting in a pub and a whole big group of ma- like masked men carrying flags of Palestine show up, what are you supposed to do, right? And the police are going to say you are the bigots for noticing that this group of men are standing outside waiting to beat you up. If people are smashing my windows, I don't think I'm worried so much about if I'm driving over them or not. You know what I'm saying? Europeans, uh, European invasion says breaking tensions are rising in Plymouth. There are clashes between British police and protesters. So <laughs> it's different footage, different camera angle from the police officer hitting the gentleman who was um, walking along asking if they were going to treat him humanely. And Andy you know, again says, Birmingham, England, August 5th, standing in front of the Village Islamic Center, a man urges Muslims from all over the country to mobilize to the city for a direct action counter white right-wing protesters. 
No right-wing protesters actually materialized yet, but the armed group is occupying an area of the city and the police don't appear to be there. So there you go. All sorts of very concerning scenes. Radio Genoa says, Islamic fanatics attack British families in Birmingham. Where are the British police with truncheons, dogs, and horses? Right, where are they? Tommy Robinson says, hundreds of Muslims now just attacking random white people's cars in Birmingham. Keir Starmer has emboldened the Muslim gangs across the country and they're basically free to do whatever they want. Yep, here is Europe invasion again. A crowd of Muslim immigrants waits outside a Birmingham McDonald's with swords and machetes. Can you imagine being in there or just sitting there waiting? And so like people have been saying for the last six months, what about the Jews? What about the Jew neighborhoods? What about this? What about that? What about the specific whatever? And I've been saying, what about all of the citizens who are being subjugated by this violence? Not just the one group of people. And this violence isn't pro-Palestinian blank. It's not, they're, they're not protesting Gaza. They're not protesting Israel. They're not, and that that's just a nice cloak that they're wearing. And like, I hate when people say this protest isn't about what they say it is, but jeepers creepers in this situation, <laughs> these people are paid by globalists like George Soros and they morphed from the rail blockades for the first nations people to black lives matter, black lives matter protests to pussy hats for a very short time period to now Israel Gaza. This one's got real staying power but it's the same protest. And that's what I've been saying all along. We're being distracted and sold a lie. And then when you or I protest, the people in charge say, we know what really they're protesting about. It's not this, it's that. It's very, very frustrating. It's very, very frustrating indeed. So language is the vector of attack at this point in time. Here's Keir Starmer. And he says, you know, those evil people, we're going to crack down on the evil people and we're going to help the good people. He uses language that people that you can hear what you want in. He's not ta- when he says the protesters. He's talking about far right protesters. He's not talking about the Muslim protesters. Okay, here we go. I had a Cobra meeting this morning, which was an opportunity that I took to thank. Did he say a Cobra meeting? Hold on, I'm gonna I gotta back this up. We got to get Cobra commander and I. We got together to and he congratulated me. He said, you know, I've I've hit my goals and now we're on the stretch goals. I got a bonus, right? Cobra commander is very happy with how England's going. I had a COBRA meeting this morning, which was an opportunity. I think that that is, okay. I don't know that he's actually meeting with COBRA commander, but that's, if if there's an NWO that exists, New World Order and any kind of like hierarchy, using the de facto bad guy from G.I. Joe as the code name, weird. It's just weird. That I took. Like, they're going to have Dr. Horrible show up next. And like the League of Evil or the Evil League of Evil, evil right? And they're going to say, oh, yeah, the Evil League of Evil is, is definitely involved in this for sure. Like, are we just parodying ourselves at this point in time? Holy crap. Okay, Keir Starmer and his Cobra meeting. I had a Cobra meeting this morning, which was an opportunity that I took to thank the police for their work over the last few days, to express my support for the police officers who have been injured and the communities impacted by this mindless thuggery. There are a number of actions that came out of the meeting. The first is we will have a standing army of specialist officers, public uh, uh, duty officers, uh, so that we'll have enough officers to deal with this where we need them. The second is we'll ramp up- You know, in people's homes. Up criminal justice. There've already been hundreds of arrests. Some have appeared in court this morning. I've asked for early consideration of the earliest naming and identification of those involved in the process who will feel the full force of the law. And thirdly, I've been absolutely clear that the criminal law applies online as well as offline. And I'm assured that that's the approach that is being taken. Whatever the apparent motivation, this is not protest. It is pure violence. And we will not tolerate attacks on mosques or our Muslim communities. So uh, the full force of the law will be visited on all those who are identified as having taken part in these activities. COBRA refers to cabinet office briefing rooms of the United Kingdom, which are meeting rooms used by the government to coordinate responses to national or regional crises. So the United Kingdom became COBRA. He is COBRA commander. This I command. Right, so the term far right. So he went through 
almost a minute and a half saying, we're going to crack down on the violence. We're going to get police officers where they need to be. We're going to do this and that of the far right at the end, right? The last 20 seconds, the far right are the ones to blame. We will protect our Muslim brothers and friends, he says. Isn't that interesting? They're the ones with the machetes. They're the ones waiting outside the, the restaurants that were built by the West, by the way, I'm just saying, um, the restaurants to beat up the British people who are in the restaurants, right? And they probably won't beat up the Muslim people who are in the restaurants. This is a wedge. It's being used to an absolute perfect pitch. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And people are going to be, either they're going to believe it or they're going to be thrown in the gulag all, along with the alt-right people who don't, right? Mar Marion, Th I can't get this guy's name right. So May Mayorin says the term far right is a cheap buzzword. I'll just play the first minute of this because it is. He's right. And here we go. The term far right is a buzzword that allows Starman and the media class to ignore the complexities of the situation we face. It provides shelter to cheap, simplistic opinions. It is the easy, cowardly option. People need to honestly ask themselves if the horrific violence we have seen at the migrant hotel and across the country was down to hundreds of, if not thousands of Nazi far right activists. Or is it more likely that what we're seeing is the climax of unaddressed grievances which have escalated to horrific, insane criminality? This is not a justification of what has happened. This is a description of what has happened and how it has happened. You cannot lazily slap down the term far right all the time and expect these issues to vanish. People lose hope. They become radicalized and end up doing crazy things. This violence can end tomorrow. If our leaders, while strongly condemning the acts of criminality, also admit that it is not far right to be concerned about three quarters of a million people net coming into the country every year. It is not far right to value your culture and community and point out there are some towns and cities that are no longer recognizable. It is not. Hello, I'd just like to say that a couple of English cities don't seem English anymore as there are no English people in them. They don't worship God. They worship Allah and they're all Muslims. So, hmm. And then obviously you'd get arrested for that. <laughs> Pointing it out nicely, right? I, I'd like, I'd like overseer to let you know that we've noticed the invasion that you're running. And then the overseer whips you because you've noticed the invasion they're running. <laughs> That's the point, right? Like you understand, we've noticed, they've noticed that we've noticed them doing this. And their response is, it's illegal. Stop noticing. Okay. And Wokeness says Sky News abruptly cuts the live feed as a mob of migrants surround its reporter. Oh, right. So I wonder, I wonder why somebody riding up to her and saying free Palestine would be a problem. Community leaders have been speaking to the police as well because... Hey, yo, free Palestine! Free Palestine! Uh, Fuck India! Make but I think, apologies for the language you're hearing, but a sense of the uh, anger, I think you can Casey, hear there. Yeah, Casey, I think we... Becky, I apologise. We uh, need to um, leave you there and... Uh, um, Becky, um, we'll have security there. And, uh, oh, right. Um, Becky will have security. We will leave that, and I apologise. So, we'll few, right? Becky's got security. What about me, right? I'm pretty sure if somebody walked up to me and started doing that BS, I don't have security. Can we deport these rabid lunatics? Wall Street Silver says the UK's news media is so desperate to create a narrative of the far right being dangerous, but the only people they can find with knives and machetes are Muslim invaders who run around attacking native Brits. Then, when the Muslims run up and harass the reporters, they cut back to the studio host, who says, oh, don't worry, Becky's got security. Mr. I spoke to has been able to access one of the uh, far-right telegram groups, and, and he saw on that a suggestion that there might be a far-right protest in this part of Birmingham uh, around this time. And that yeah, like right now, right when we're looking at this mob of Muslim, armed Muslim men. Mr. I spoke to has been able to access one... Are you kidding me right now? Like, seriously. Oh, there might be a far-right protest right around where this gentleman's standing here looking violently at me with his sword. Charlie Sampson says, man stabs the tire of the Sky News van. For those wondering, he's not a member of the far right. Will we get a statement from Keir Starmer? Do not mind anyone. No, no, no. He's gonna, he's gonna us. He's gonna do the same to us. Yeah, so he stabs the tires of the Sky News van. And, and the woman says, he's going to do the same to us. And watch the police officer intimidatingly walk around this guy who's, who's broadcasting and he's got a, a bullhorn as well, so everybody can hear what he's saying. Here is one of the far-right protests they're worried about. Answer's always none. It's zero. 
hold on, I have to mention that the protest is obviously not far right. Like this is just normal people saying, have you noticed that there's a whole bunch of Muslim guys walking around with swords? Can we please stop the Muslim guys walking around with swords? And then the government says, oh, a far right incident happened. The answer is always none, it's zero. Keir Starmer has declared war on concerned citizens. He's declared war on patriots, on families. The 99% of people on the right are terrified of what we have imported into Britain. And together, the British public says no more. Close the borders, get the invaders out, protect our children. Keir Starmer has made it clear he is not interested in what 99% of protesters have to say. Peaceful protesters want to be heard by the government and he needs to start listening. You must form together and stand together shoulder to shoulder peacefully in, this, in the common goal. There's one aim and that is get the illegals out. Britain says no more! No more! So, that's UKIP. And so, we'll see. I'm surprised he wasn't arrested during the middle of that speech when he said no more and get the illegals out. Oh, illegals, that's a trigger word. The White Rabbit says, breaking news, breaking UK news, I've received credible intel that those who appear to be Muslim migrants in the UK are actually UN soldiers. This is why police have a stand down order for anything they attend that involves these men. It's why they arrived in the UK without families and are housed in hotels as guests of the crown. The footage of them arriving on boats was a carefully crafted movie to distress Britons. It is an operation to garner UK public support for digital identity so Britons can feel safe. The operation will end when digital ID is adopted, like the Trump assassination attempting attempt civilians matching the description of those you should fear have been used for what will appear like an escalation of societal violence. It's very important, Britons, that you do not fall for this PSYOP as it is the one that will hammer the final nail into the coffin of freedom. You are in the fifth generation, you are in a fifth generation war. They cannot drop bombs as they wish to retain the infrastructure and architecture, surveillance state, etc. Step back, wake up, do not become violent and fall for this, the white rabbit. So the point is to incite violence of the population right? Refuse to hear them, refuse to hear them, flood the country with illegals who may be soldiers. And again, take everything with a grain of salt, okay? Everything I'm presenting to you is on the internet and therefore could have been manipulated at some point. I am not intending to manipulate anything. And if I make an error in my attempted factual reporting, I'll try and correct it. But overall, take it all with a grain of salt because everything is so crazy. You could like game theory, <laughs> like I know that you know that I know, right? Game theory, et cetera. Um, or in order to in, in order to maximize um, your likelihood of success, you need to not take the bait. Because while we know, I know that we're in a fifth generation warfare, the people who are who are using that strategy against the public know we're in fifth generation warfare. So with that knowledge we can't then take everything they say at face value. We have to understand what would the intended response be for this news? New pandemic, bird flu, monkeypox. <gasps> the intended response was, oh my gosh, we're all going to die. Please, daddy government, save us. And when the response was monkeypox, are you effing kidding me? They, they kind of went, uh oh, <laughs> right? Bring out another flu variation, which seems to, seems to not have the same... Um, fatal flaw that the COVID variations had. The COVID variations sounded like movies, like the COVID Megatron and COVID Environ or Mega Environ or whatever. It sounded like Pokemon for crying out loud, right? Whereas H5N1 still scares people, which is ridiculous and it shouldn't because it's the same nonsense. It's the same lie. But fundamentally, if everybody knows that everybody's lying, taking something at face value is incorrect. That's the wrong strategy. You should look at it, understand what the intended response is and do the opposite. Look at this, understand the intended response is for you to respond violently and do the opposite. That's the point. That's what we should do. And we are terminally bound by people behaving stupidly all the time. The, the Freedom Convoy was probably the best response because it was peaceful and they did everything they could to, to claim that it was not peaceful. The Freedom Convoy, Freedom Convoy would probably work in Britain. Do a Freedom Convoy, guys. Europe Invasion says, Manchester now looks like a city in Pakistan. Civilization has completely disappeared. When I was a kid, we used to go shopping in Manchester. Look at this guy in a dress. Ridiculous. Um, we used to go shopping in Manchester. He was wearing some kind of Muslim garb. Um, we used to go shopping in Manchester and it was very British. It was, they had 
Manchester was so when I would visit my family, my family was from a place called Ellesmere Port, which is a small little port city. Um, and so we would go and land in Manchester. So the airport's in Manchester. We had some family in Chester, some family in the Wirral, Birkenhead, and some family in, in Ellesmere Port. So Manchester was like the big city, right? Chester was the city we'd go to. And it was it's a cool little city. It's got Roman walls. So like the main part of Chester, you can still walk on the elevated Roman walls around Chester. And the shops are really cool and very British and all the rest. But we'd go to Manchester every so often for, you know, like a day in the big city type deal. Although Chester had everything you really needed. But we'd go and it's crazy the difference between then and now, right? And it's across the entire United Kingdom. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse. I was yesterday, I was in uh, on the way up to Port Elgin. We were in Paisley, I think it was Paisley, or maybe it was in Mild May or Harriston. And we drove by a brand new hotel being put up, hundreds of rooms ready to go, right? It wasn't quite ready to go. The building was like, the building itself was there, but the, the walls hadn't been finished yet. The units hadn't been done, hundreds of rooms. And um, the person in the car with me pointed it out and said, oh, like, I wonder, you know, look, look at all that housing. And I was like, they're going to dump hundreds of migrants here. They're going to put, they're going to fill that place. Harrison has a population of what, like 200 people. They're going to fill that hotel with migrant men, 200 more people living in Harrison. The population's just doubled. And now half of the population is migrant men. Good? No, very bad. Why are we allowing it? Concerned Citizen says, breaking Belfast, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland has entered the fight, right? So the IRA. Um, police speaker says, attention, attention, the crowd does, should disperse. And in response, Molotov cocktail. Attention, attention. This is a police message. The crowd should disperse immediately as force is about to be used against violent individuals. No further warnings will be given. So things are not great and getting worse. The Federson says, who's the real enemy? Megatron says, breaking. Iran has put up billboards of Jesus Christ's Last Supper and support for Christianity across the country in response to the craziness of the Olympics. Weird. Weird. What does it take? Right? So like if, if you were in North Korea, let's just do a thought experiment. If you were in North Korea and you believe Kim Jong-un was an unbelievable golf Guy, yeah, one of the things that um, the Kim Jong people, Kim, Kim Jong Il, Kim Jong, they, they claim a perfect golf game and they claim all of these unlikely things. So when you live in the propaganda, you believe that as a matter of course, it just is. That's what everybody says. So that's what's true, right? And so we've been told in North Korea, they're told that the bad guys are, you know, certain people and they believe it, I presume, right? So if we're told the bad guys are certain people, and then we're shown evidence from our government about that. And then there's big wars and we say, yeah, we should beat those bad evil people because they're bad and evil. And then like stuff like this happens. I, I seriously question, like, are we being completely manipulated? Are we living in the modern North Korea? Are we, are, are we allowing a, an insane group of people to reshape humanity because we've been bamboozled and tricked into being on the wrong side of obviously the right side of things, right? I, like when you say women's health and what you mean is killing babies and you say maid and what you mean is killing old people, like we might not be good. We might be bad people, right? Like when you, if you, if, if we said North Korea, in North Korea, when they say women's health, they mean killing their baby. You would be like, wow, that's crazy. Why would they do that? Right? But that's what that means here. So that's weird. Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.